first of all, thanks to all the guys that are here. Um, yeah, today we will talk about uh, TDD. Just some word about me. My name is uh, Gianluca Gipad. So if you find a fractali broccoli around it, probably I am. Uh, um, yeah, I worked in a lot of uh, different languages uh, starting uh, a lot of time ago. And uh, yeah, so starting uh, probably six years ago, I started to, to using and uh, working in Alexander Land and Erlang. So now is my work uh, is almost in Elixir. And also Erlang, clearly. So what we talk today, today we talk about uh, TDD. And uh, so what is TDD? So just to, before to start, how many of you are familiar with TDD? Raise your hand. How many of you use TDD every day? How many of you think that TDD is a waste of time? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay. So um, this is this are some links about TDD that we we show just now. So just to be sure and to yeah, I'm an Italian. I, I like to talk also about history. And uh, this is the history of TDD, or better, it is the history of extreme programming that was uh, a development environment where probably started uh, the, um, the TDD. So we are talking about uh, 1993, a lot of time ago. When, uh, and we are talking about uh, small talk. So it is not a functional language, but it is a, an object orientation language. But uh, there are some similarity between uh, small talk and uh, Erlang, especially in, in the idea that, uh, that came in together. So yeah, we are talking about 93, 94, and 96 when they started to develop a, a project. And uh, yeah, starting from 93 to 96, nothing was done. Okay, so Kent Beck uh, was hired and was uh, the father of uh, extreme programming and also the, the inventor of TDD. So in March 96, uh, 1996, uh, they make a plan and so they arrived almost uh, at the end in 1997. So we are talking about a lot of years ago. And uh, yeah, they develop, uh, they deliver the project and so everything was good. More or less, I don't know if you know the entire story, but at the end, the project was cancelled. But okay, this is another story. Uh, so, how many of you know UML? Because UML is almost on the same time. We are talking always about 1994, 1995, 1990, so the, the end of 90. So in this year, if you want to make design, and if you want to make... Uh, something good you should have you must have to to do some uml and this is something that was very stressful for for, for a lot of uh, developers especially for for Kent Beck, that decide to create something different that was tdd so tdd is something against uml okay and so if uml is something about design probably also tdd is something about design and not testing. Okay, this is a very important point because uh, yeah, this is the story of UML, and so it is still alive. This is take from uh, Quora, where uh, the author so can back respond and say that the TDD was rediscovered by Ken Beck. Okay, so it is something that uh, not uh, so true. So so uh, so here, so he discovered in an ancient book when there was a type, a tape to program uh, the computer, okay? So probably we are talking about uh, the 50 or the 60. So this is something that is not new, okay? From Wikipedia, TDD, test-driven development, is a software development process that relies on the repetition of a very short development cycle. So this is the first things because uh, the short part 
is very important. So we have a repetition of very small cycle, and the requirements are turned into very specific test case. Then the software is improved to pass the new test only. And this is another important thing, because if you want to do TDD, you should not write the test, all the tests and all the production code, or often one test and all the production code, or against all the production code and then the test. So the TDD is a software development process. And I think that is something that should help us to design software. This is opposed to software development that allows software to, yeah. And uh, this is where um, can I talk about rediscover the, the technique, OK? So uh, as you can see, I am an Italian. I am a son of uh, Giotto, Raffaello, and probably a bit of uh, Leonardo, as you can see. If I fail as a programmer, I have a career as, a, as an artist, a painter, OK? So this is TDD. OK, nothing more. <laughs> Write a failing test, make the test pass, and refactor, and repeat again. This is a uh, TDD. Nothing special, nothing strange, no rocket science, very simple, OK? So add the test and run all tests, or at least the test that you have just written, and see if it's right. This is a very, very important, because this is the first part when you validate your assumption. Because if you write your test and don't execute it, probably you are not sure if, it's, if it is a right assumption about your code. Write the code and only the part that make the test pass. This is another very important part because, again, you are trying to create your project incrementally. Okay? And you try to keep your code slim as possible. Run the test and uh, yeah, refactor the code. This is another important part. So this is a TDD, okay? Very simple. Repeat again. So why TDD? The doctor told me to use TDD two time, one in the morning and one in the end. No, because uh, less bug. I like it. So yeah, I like it. I feel more comfortable. Yeah, sure. Put here whatever you want, so why you use the DD. But uh, for me, the more important thing is because it helps to create a good design. OK? I start to use TDD, yeah, probably around uh, the end of 19. So wh wh when Ken Beck uh, discovered, because I was in touch with some guys that worked with, with Ken Beck, and said, so, yeah. TDD change the point of view, because uh, force the developer to think about the behavior of your code, OK? So you are watching your production code when you write the, the TDD, OK? When you write the test. So talks to the developer showing what are the difficult points of your code. This is a very important point, because uh, the test talks sometimes scream, scream in pain. But yeah, test talks to the developer. And we should be able to listen it. So check this code, OK? Very simple, a classic module, OK? No, nothing special, so you can pass a, a PID uh, and, and some message, OK? Take the PID, uh, take the message, put in a tuple, and send it, OK? This is the test. There are any issue in, the, in this test for you? First of all, the name. The name doesn't mean anything. Postpone write. So what is the behavior of the code? And this, or, to, or test, is slow. So this thing is something that the tests are telling us, right? So we can try to fix, but we get more in trouble, because uh, 
We are changing a global variable, and the global variable is not a good thing, and the tests are not more isolated. So how many of you have this pain in tests? So probably uh, if you're working in a legacy code, you, you, you have th this problem, right? So how we can try to fix this? In this way, mm -hmm. First of all, we lose the concurrency. OK, we could accept it. We are in testing, so OK, we could lose the concurrency. I don't know what is this, but yeah. I don't know how many of you uh, know the, the library, but uh, this, um, this flag is, big, is to say that uh, I want to, to mock only this, uh, this, this um, function of the module process, but and not all the entire order type function. And OK, why? Because my code are using only uh, send after. But yeah, I have to do it. And still doesn't work. Because I don't know if you know it, but, but the, Erlang, the Elixir compiler uh, substitute this code with the Erlang version. And also, if you try to mock the Erlang version, it is not possible because this is changed. So it doesn't work, OK? Because, and this is one important thing, the process module is not our module. This is another thing that this test telling us. OK? So this is not a tool problem. Often. I have heard when I made consultancy in the company say, oh, if uh, I had uh, the, the tool of the end of the war, so the, the final tool that solves all my problem. No, it is not a tool problem. It is a design problem. Why it is a design problem? First of all, the name. And second, this test is low. Okay. How can we solve this issue? First of all, change the name. It's simple, OK? So write a test that tells us what are trying to do. Describe the behavior of your method and manage the function. So pass the data. Pass how many time you have to delay this message. But, uh, Doing something like this, we are changing the production code. So we are shaping our production code. And this code is, could be written in something like this. OK? Yeah. So nothing special, nothing uh, uh, revolutionary, but yeah. Can we do better? I think yes, if you go on this path. So TDD, first of all, doesn't mean unit testing. This is a big, mis big problem, so a big misunderstanding. Often when I, when I, when I talk with, uh, with a lot of people, oh, yeah, 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 I'm doing TDD. I, I, I'm writing a lot of unit tests. Good job, but TDD is not only unit testing. TDD is something more. You could have end-to-end -end testing that work on the entire system. You could have... Uh, Integration test and clearly also a lot of unit tests. Okay, so why is it important to know which type of test uh, we we are writing? Because we get different feedback from different type of tests. So another uh, piece of artwork. Uh, if we are writing unit test, we are getting a lot of confidence on the internal design of our application. If we are writing end-to-end -end test, we are, got, we are getting a lot of information about the external quality of our code. Clearly, in the middle, we are in the middle. Okay. This is very important because uh, uh, a lot of projects have a lot of unit tests, but the, the production code simply doesn't work, but because when you put everything together, it doesn't work. If you, cre if you put only end-to-end -end tests, you have another different type of problem because you don't shape your code 
in a good way. So if you go back to the definition of, uh, of the TDD, as you can see, there is no written you should write only unit, uh, unit tests, okay? They talk about uh, tests. So why don't put another loop that take all your feature, and so write a filing acceptance test, and then to end, so acceptance test and end to end test for me is the same, that take care of all your feature, okay? And so, this type of test exercises the entire stack of your application, remain read until the feature is completed, and don't write too much end-to-end -end test because they, it is slow and fragile. What is the design? Okay, this is a, a good point. So the design is here. Yeah, you can picture and sell it. Yeah, so this is the design because uh, If we try to create an end-to-end -end test, you should interact with the, your entire system, okay? So our application should be done in a way that uh, take care of some part. The first one is the inner part, so the core, what I call the in this picture, the core. If you came from a DDD environment, uh, they call a domain uh, or so, something like this. But the important part is that you should take care of your core, so the inner part of your application, and have some things that is called a port and something that is called, called in this way, an, an adapter. So if you are able to make a test that take care of your entire stack, it is a good thing, otherwise you go inside and try to uh, test it from the adapter, okay? So, are we creating our application? This is a good thing because uh, I, I don't know how many of you know this uh, type of design of your application. It's called often a port and adapter or hexagonal architecture and it's quite famous in the Java, also in the OP world, okay? Because you have the internal part where your object uh, talk together, and uh, you have the, the, the port, and you have the adapter. So it, it is quite, quite famous. But I think that is not related to the world of uh, OP, because uh, this is a good way of uh, doing application. So in OP, in object orientation, we pass object reference to the object under test. This is quite common. In functional programming, we have immutability. And this is a good thing. In Elixir, we have almost always immutability because sometimes we can do tricky things. Okay. Immutability means purity. This is not related to the dark lord or your soul, but is related to side effects. Ta-da! All the morning we are talking about side effects. So, What are the instructions that make the code impure? Every time we make an I.O. operation, we are not pure. Every time we send a message, and every time we use the time. So this morning we talk <laughs> almost on, on the same things, okay? So, what happened when we lost uh, our purity? You are not, your soul is not called by something strange, but yeah, we depend to something external, right? So, we are doing at least integration test. This is something important to, to understand. And uh, Again, in OP, it's quite common to use the mock to shape the interaction between object. In functional programming, for me, mock should be used to manage the impurity. Okay? Mock, one of the more controversial words in the world. Want to use mock? when we want to isolate one part from another. 
This is a good advice to you to, to say, okay? Classic example, HTTP connection. We have to make some uh, HTTP calls and manipulate it. So, okay, how can we do it? Don't try this at all, okay? So, don't write this code. Oh, I have uh, written for a long time this code, this type of code, okay? Why? Because, again, we are mocking not uh, we are mocking uh, an external uh, module that is uh, HTTP poison, and uh, we are not doing design, we are simply testing. If we want to get more value from the test, we could do something like uh, this, okay? Mock a new module that's part of our application, that is remote data, and a function called uh, create, okay, create is not a good, uh, a good name, but uh, something that talks the language of your core. So this is our module, and this, and this is more related to our, to our function. And again, so where we are, we are here. We are at the boundaries of our, our application, okay, because uh, and this is very important, is the core that decide the language that we should use to talk with the external. And only in the adapter part, we take care of how to translate the data and the language that we use inside your core with the external, okay? If we write the test before, we can shape this behavior and push the idea that are inside the core through the external, okay? Again, if we do I.O., something like this, we are lost our impurity, but the problem is not only the impurity in, in, in this part of the test, and also be, we are mixing two different abstraction levels, because we are talking about data manipulation and also of writing. So, how can we solve this issue in this way? But again, we are not mimic the API of the of the file module, but we are trying to improve and to increase our abstraction. Talking about storage, probably uh, the default implementation is file storage, but we could, we can also use memory storage or something like this. And uh, in, 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 the, in the test, we, can, we could write something like this. So create a, a mock, uh, in, in this case, without using a library, and pass this module as a variable. And if we write the test before, we are shaping our production code. This is very important. Time. Time is evil. A lot. OK, how many of you? Uh, have ever seen code like this and say, okay, this is, this is simple, this is simple, right? I can, I can write a, a, a test like this, okay? It's work, it's work, I run it. And fail for uh, some microseconds. Ah. I can ignore the last microsecond and I, oh, if only I have a more uh, tool that can ignore the microsecond. No, it is not a tool problem. It is a design problem because you are mixing purity and purity. How can you solve it? In this way, mock the clock. Because the clock is probably something that is related to the domain of your application. And so you can now use uh, something like this. And it works. Right? How to manage a periodic task? Because the time clearly sometimes say, OK, I have to, to do. Yeah? Divide it a temper. So create a module that takes care of your task in a functional way, like this. OK? So this module have a function called tick, uh, call it whatever you want. 
and it works in a functional way. So receive a data, receive a struct, receive a map, and change it and give you the new state. This is a function. This is functional. This is purity. Okay? And test it, and it works. This is unit test because, yeah, it is all in memory. And then make a different test on the server part. So you have a process that inside uses the other module. And now you can use the mock to create the relationship between the server and the module. And here, you are making an integration test. As you can see, there is an eventually asset that is a function that you can write um, very simple that reiterate your data. Because here, you have a synchronicity. Because you send a message and you, you receive a response. And this is, for example, a, a simple implementation of, of that part. Okay, Very simple. In the init, you send the message, and every time you receive that message, you apply that function to the parity function. Well, this morning, I, I have listened the, the, the keynote. I say, OK, I'm almost on the right direction. If Peter Varroy says something like this, oh, yeah, it's true. Because we are splitting the functional part and the integration part. Where to use the mocks? Again, we are on the boundary. We are out at the boundary of our, of our uh, application. Okay? Try to keep the core pure so we don't have side effect inside it. This is design, right? Well, not to use mock. Don't use mock on models that you don't know. But because, not because it is a tool problem, because you are not doing design. Because you are, if you accept the language, the function of your external application, you are putting this data and this connection inside your core. And it should be the opposite. So decide what is your module, your function, your behavior. And then apply, make a model that translate this part. Right? So don't write. Uh, something like this. And also another thing that I suggest uh, to do is uh, don't use mock because as a white you are not doing uh, unit tests. This is a nonsense for me. If you have a uh, micro module 1, micro module 2, and micro module 3, so three modules that are related to the core and are all, all these modules are pure, use it. Don't, don't write a test like this. It, it, it is a nonsense for me. This is our pure module. Use it. Try to shape the behavior of uh, the micro module one, that is the external, using the test. So the test should shape the behavior. So which uh, argument are, I'm using uh, in the input, which that I receive, and not what happened inside. This is fragile. So, no. Mix everything together. We are almost in time. What is the first test to do? We could start from the hand-to-hand -hand and go inside the application. This is what I suggest to do. We don't talk about user story, so sorry for what I've written, but yeah, create at least one hand-to-hand -hand for every user story that you have. OK? And don't create too much end-to-end, -to -end because they are slow and fragile. They should help you only to identify what, what is the, the constraint of, of your user story. And try to manage your application and also give you some feedback about the external quality of your application. So for example, this is uh, an end-to-end -end test that I often uh, written. So as a logged user, I want to see my active games. We are talking about uh, games, OK? So I, the first thing that I, that I do when I start to develop is write a test like this, OK? And this test remains red. But in this test, I decide 
what are the components of my application, at least on the external part. So clear, clearly, I have a game. I have an API made like this. And I decide that I have an expected response for that game. OK. So I write this end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, all the implementation, green, again. Write another end-to-end -end like this. For example, I will create a new game. So I make a post, I receive a con, extract the response, and the response should be done at least like this. So it should uh, have uh, an ID and uh, a status who is active. OK? So the test, the end-to-end -end remain red until I have completed all the cycle. So the first part is write end to end and then go inside your core and try to create some unit tests, OK? And this unit test should be pure, or better, the code, the implementation code that solves the unit test should be pure, OK? So this is, for example, uh, the first test that I want to create for the internal part. At every tick, the count is incremented. So I create a module that receives the clock, and I pass the state to the tick, I receive the new state, and check that the new state is the, the count inside the state is incremented, also the last update at is, is this. So this is one possible implementation, but there is another one that I prefer that is this. Because it's more functional again. Instead of make a Dependency injection. <clears throat> Instead of pass the entire module to the to the micro module, we could only and simple pass the, the time that we get at the boundary of our application, right? After that, we have written this this type of test. Move to the boundaries and create uh, test some some the adapter. So, for example, we we test for the storage. The classical test of a Phoenix application. And I suggest to use the real DB. Don't try to mock the database. It is a nightmare. And for example, this is a test that you could write for, uh, for an internal part that is related to the, to the process. So in, in this case, I, I would have, uh, um, I don't know, single zone server for every game, OK? We are we are analyzing. We should we should use a process, okay? And so in in this case, I'm I'm shaping the the relationship between my server and the other part of my of my application. So I have a game storage with a function that is called load, and another function that is the tick, okay? And so my server start link. I make I call the tick of my game server, and I want that. They call the function of micro module. I don't want to bother you between the difference between mock and stub, but just to give you an hint, the micro module is a mock and the game server is a stub. But, okay, give me some question about it. And uh, this is another, another test on, on the game server that, uh, for example, I want to. Uh, to verify that the game, the, the new state is stored on the database. OK? And in, in this case, I don't have used mock, but I have decided to, to use the database. I'm doing unit test. No. This is integration test. I'm doing TDD. Yes. I'm doing design. I think yes. Right in the test before the implementation, we are doing design. Because we are deciding what is the behavior of our module, not the implementation, the behavior. We are shaping the production code, and the code beca became more composable. This is, for me, a good advantage, a very, very good. And uh, also, it is more clear where are the side effects. And this is another point uh, very important when you design application. Because uh, in Italy, say, we know where is the tail and where is the head. So 
you know what thing happens. And yeah, it is more clear what I did. Just a recap. So TDD is not a silver bullet, clearly. TDD doesn't give us a good design if we are not able to do it. So it helps us. It gives us some hints. The test tells us. But we are in charge, so we should decide uh, how our, our, our code should be written. So yeah, TDD can help us to find some issue. For example, when I, when I see a test with a big, uh, long uh, setup, I say that this is a design problem. And this is the problem of the, of the production code. The production code should be changed, not the test. Not uh, the tool. Listen to the test. Often they are screaming in pain. So please go home and save your test. Some reference. The first one is a book that I, for me, is very, very good. If you want to, to do some TDD, it is a book about uh, OP and Java application. But, but I suggest to read it because a lot of uh, topics are not related to the to the op world and also to the to the java world the same from uh, clean architecture that is some post and some book of uh, uncle bob uh, the second is a unit test uh, in erlang that are some post of uh, Devon Estes, I, I suppose to say the, the, the right uh, pronunciation. And uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So I suggest to, to, to read it. Uh, the fourth is a mock and explicit contrast. I see that also Claudio before talking about uh, this test and is uh, written by Jose. So yeah, very interesting. Then uh, we have property based testing with proper hair, Herlang, and Elixir. Read, uh, it's a book uh, of uh, Fred Herb, written uh, yeah, by, by Fred Herb. Uh, very interesting, so yeah, I suggest. The last one is a book that uh, Andrea Lopard, my friend, one of the core team of the, of the Elixir core, uh, are writing with uh, his friend. That, Sorry, I don't remember the name, but yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. So they are writing. And uh, yeah, this is all for me. So thank you very much.